Going on, everyone. Welcome to this matchup, the first matchup of the Sunday matches. I am Monk the Dan. Joining me today is the one and only Kato. Hey, how's it going? It's been a while since I've been here, but it's good to be back. It's good to see you back, mate. It's been awesome. Uh, so yeah, we got a really close matchup on our hands today. We've got the 14th seed in Australia coming up against Norway's 18th. Australia having a little bit of a, a blunder on the qualifiers, as I'm sure a lot of people were aware. Uh, Emrick missing that, uh, that alarm, I suppose. Yeah, it seems like obviously Emrick wasn't quite there for that one, and that might have hindered the results a little bit, but... I mean, a lot of people are obviously expecting Australia to be one of those top eight teams, especially based on the roster and how strong things look, are looking. Um, Norway, once again, coming around in the mid-seed. They're, they're usually one of those teams that hover around there, but for the most part, still a very solid team, and I wouldn't be surprised if they're going to be able to take a few points of Australia today, if not perhaps cause some sort of upset. Yep, uh, I completely agree with you on that one, and also it's worth noticing Norway losing a few of their uh, veterans from the years. They've lost Kevzi, um who was there in 2017, and they've also lost Comfy as well. So they've had a two-player roster change just about, but we all know their main core roster in GN and Yolks Pie, two phenomenal players in uh, the tournament scene, pretty much since my existence, uh, the last three years at least. And yeah, we'll talk a little bit on that Australian roster as well, bringing in a few rookies. One of the, uh, so, sort of the most amount of rookies Australia's had uh, in recent times, adding Vivarchi, um, most people kind of know him as Kevin. We've got Milo Milkshake as well and Suffix. Some names a uh, few people might not be very familiar with as they aren't too active in the tournament scene, but I'm sure you've seen them around in, um, in solo play. Yeah, for sure. A lot of those, a lot of the new players stepping up these days, are, you know, as much as they haven't really had an OWC debut just yet, I mean, up until this point, uh, a lot of them have been very strong throughout community tournaments and whatnot. So, you know, we've been able to see a lot of impressive performances coming out from them in those tournaments. Yes, absolutely. Uh, worth talking about this pool. We are sitting on a nice average of around 6.2 stars, right? So why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, some of these maps here? So we've got a lot of maps, which uh, I, I would say this is a good introductory to a lot of the skill sets that are meant to be tested in this kind of round. So obviously round of 32 being you know the earliest stage that we see these teams face off on there's definitely room for a lot of upsets and on top of that there are a couple maps on the easier side which you know you can potentially expect certain teams maybe going for a ban on something simple or maybe trying to opt for the harder ban if some of the teams are struggling with those maps in particular and again it all comes down to skill sets you know there's there's so many different maps so many different skills tested and you know it's just going to be pretty much which which of the two teams feel more comfortable banning certain things. I think in particular we might see Norway ban out some of the DT picks maybe against Australia. Uh, maybe yeah, we've actually we've seen the bans already. Uh, opting for that Hard Rock one ban immediately, Australia will follow suit with the banger of Hidden Two. So yeah, it's 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 kind of yeah, just like you said, we're seeing uh, Norway kind of ban out these high mechanical picks with with the Hard Rock one and. Um, I'm not too sure if it's a two band system. I'm pretty sure it was actually just the one band uh, this first week. So yep. they're going to leave that DT up, right? Yeah, round of, round of 32 is just the one band this time around. And uh, yeah, as I mentioned, um, obviously you've got uh, Australia going for the AR8 hidden band, which is pretty much a solid band against Norway. You know, they have very, very strong hidden players, especially when it comes to, you know, AR8. And on top of that, you've got the Norway banning out Hard Rock 1, which is a pretty staple pick, I would say. You know, you, Australia has a very, very solid Hard Rock roster overall. So I think yeah, these are pretty safe bans from both of these teams. Yeah, it looks like Australia is definitely coming prepared. You know, you see Yolks, Pai, GN on the same team and you immediately just think, uh, we got to get rid of all the low AR, we got to get rid of all the kind of uh, high mechanic gimmicks in the pool. And yeah, they, they definitely got outscored on the uh, qualifiers in the ARA hidden slot. By about 400k, which is which is quite a lot on, uh, especially on the last map, GN um, and Yolks Pie. Yolks Pie putting up an incredible FC on that ARA hidden last week, which was arguably the hardest map in the pool. So, no surprise to see that one taken away. Um, we are going to get into the first pick for uh, for this one, and that is Free Mod Two. Yeah, Free Mod Two Moose coming in here, which is honestly something I expected from Norway. I, you know, since they they have the hiddens being banned out against them. I think opting for some freedom where they have the ability to put one or two players on hard rock and then obviously opt for the other ones being hidden or just going for no more comfort picks. I think free mod is usually a safe bet in round of 32 stages. 
when it comes to just sort of seeing where the teams are at, like, you know, what, what kind of things you can expect from both sides. It's always a good thing to opt in to when you're first getting into the match, I would say, to break the nerves. Yeah, it's also a really good pick if that AR8 has been banned. You know, you're still forcing your opponent, at least one of them, to put up a uh, low or sort of a hidden only uh, score, which Australia most likely are capable of doing. I'm, I'm pretty sure we're likely to see a hidden coming in from Machine, you know, we all know Machine. Uh, through OWC, through the years for Australia, their hidden parry, you know, he's always been there. And uh, Milo on this one is, is, you know, you're expecting him to probably fill that hard drop slot. I'd like to see what Norway bring in, as it looks like GN won't be playing this uh, first map. We've got Yoke's Fifel, and Julesen, and Melva. That is an incredibly difficult game to say on the lineup for Norway, with Australia bringing Dummy, Milo, Emrek, and Machine. So yeah, at the gates, we do see Emrek is here, which is exciting. Um, obviously the number one player in the world right now. It's always nice to see that he didn't sleep in for this one, but uh, yeah, I yep. think Norway, we're probably going to expect a hidden coming out of Yotes Pie and potentially Hardbrook coming out of Yell. Uh, as for extra mods or overmod, it's very possible. I mean, these are early stage mods, uh, early stage maps. Here we are, and look at that. You're spot on with that. Yotes Pie is taking that hidden machine with the hidden and Milo with the hard rock. Worth pointing out, this is Milo Milkshake's first OWC. He does not play a lot of tournaments, so keep an eye on him you know this is his his debut i'm not too sure about the debuts on norway i'm pretty sure all of these players played last year um for the side of norway but yeah we're gonna get straight into it this uh this type of song the build-up really does kind of kick you you know that sort of rock music the drums going at it builds up the nerves it actually matters what type of song it is when you're uh, in tournament yeah, I feel like uh, if anything, like this kind of map with, or this kind of song rather, would definitely, I, I, I don't know, like would it shake your nerves more or less? You know, you've got someone screaming in your ear at the same time as you're trying to play it. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know, yeah. am I getting hyped or am I just getting even more nervous? You know, <laughs> I just get intimidated, and I'm like, that is a powerful voice behind that, and I start shaking. There's just no way. <laughs> but yeah, no players struggling on this intro. This is one of the more sort of tame maps, I guess you could say. Um, but on those mods, it's definitely a stretch. We have actually seen a miss from Dummy early on on the no mod there. Bit of an oh, yeah, really miss. That. And uh, oh. look at Milo's act on the hard rock there. He's actually was sitting on a high 99, just dropped below 98. Um, but also, Emrek has taken hard rock and oh my god, and it's a double break, a complete blunder from Milo and Machine. So that's two big mods gone. And on the side of Norway, no one's faulted at all. This is looking like a solid first pick. We're already halfway through the map. Yeah, and you've got both both Norway and Australia often for two hard rocks on each side as well. And Fjell is looking very comfortable on this one. You've got Milo also. Oh, match, you have to do it. Oops, yeah, sorry. Fjell has gone and so is Melba. So now it really is just Emrek on the side of Australia. Dummy is following suit to Veteran. So we do need to see a break from Eddie Yokepine and Julson really quickly because this is 300k with only 15% left. And there it is. There is an opportunity now. It's just Yokepine versus Dummy Emrek. Oh, this could swing back to Australia. I think Dummy can get around 800k. Emrek definitely around 1.5, 150, so it's closing. But we'd have to see a break from Yoke by, right? You've got a significant accuracy advantage on the side of Australia as well. That score lead it's is... It's closing fast. It's, really closing. it's, it's about 10% less. Dude, not even that. It's literally the ending. It's, it's just 10K. not enough time. Oh my god, if... <laughs> Norway is going to edge it out by at least five seconds. They were gone in five more seconds, but what a first pick from Norway. An immediate uh, dub for the Norwegians there. That is shambles for the 5-0 pickings for, for Australian fans out there. I know devastating, but what a score from Emrek coming in from his, for his second OWC. He's going to FC that Yokes Pino Slouch either 97 on the hidden. Very impressive stuff there. So we're seeing no Nomod FCs out of the gate. Yeah, I mean, Norway definitely looked very practiced on that one. As you can see, a lot of very solid scores and combos across the entire team. We did obviously have uh, a few mishaps from Milo Milkshake and Machine in that slower section, which was kind of expected, to be honest, because that is one of the spots where, you know, Hard Rock definitely has a lot of a struggle when it comes to, like, the spacing changes and some of the weird, like, awkward snaps in that map. But All right. Now we have JTB going ahead and picking the DT2. This is the Swedish stamina pick. A, uh, an immediate pick uh, to combat Norway here. You pick the slower maps, we're going to pick the faster maps, and Australia no slouch with their speed roster, an incredible, you know, you've got Dummy Emrek as not the two fastest players on the team, because let me tell you about Suffix. He is fast. He's actually might not play this map, um, 
a bit of a late game speed play, we might actually see Milo play this. Worth noting out, Milo had 6 100s on that last map. By the way, Hard Rock Act, pretty good stuff. An unfortunate one missed there for him. We're going to see a lot of roster changes coming in for our Norway. It looks like Yoke Pai is seeing this one out. I think Winzy is actually one of the new players joining the Norway roster this time around. So this is going to be the debut map for them. Oh, and let's go. As you mentioned as well with Milo Milkshake from last map, uh, definitely one of the players to look out for when it comes to hard rock accuracy. Uh, I mean, as much as it's the debut and you know you did end up seeing a miss there, still accuracy is going to be the one thing that you will have in You will always have, time. yeah. Yeah, it's also a lot of people familiar with Milo, uh, he, uh, you know, play a lot of DT, fast DT. He's incredibly good at DT as well. Um, so not going to see him get outscaled anytime soon. It's really just how is this consistency early on, and that goes the same for everyone. Uh, really glad to see Emrek and Dummy there putting up great scores. And he, if you've got all these OWC veterans like Yokes Pai just FCing that sort of map on command. It's incredible. Yeah, Yokes Pai obviously known for very, very solid tournament performances over the past few years, and also OWC performances as well. I mean, in the past, we've had him do many of the replays for a lot of the hidden maps, so it's definitely yeah. a piece, so. You expect um, pretty much almost anything. Yeah, it's worth noting here, uh, the D2, DT2 scores from Qualifiers Australia got a 4.49 million um, combined score, with Norway getting 2.6 million. Uh, so they had four FCs just about, um, and Norway had only the one in nine Rick, so or nine Eric, whatever. So we'll be keeping our eyes on him to see if he can carry Norway through this. Of course, on stage is a lot different than Qualifiers. The nerves are incredible. Yeah, and Eric is also one of the new members of the Norway roster, so again, you know, it's good to see a lot more new players jumping in and uh, performing well as well. Yep, so we've got Jordan LR7 as, is that the only roster swap for Machine from the last map? I believe it is. Yep, that um, is the only roster swap, and also again, another debut. <laughs> Actually no, Jordan played last year. Jordan had one of the incredible years, uh, one of the best rookies I've ever seen um, for Australia actually last year. He was solid oh, on yeah. all the speed picks and all the uh some of the hints as well we're gonna see the first break there from Jordan. pretty I completely forgot that i skipped it yeah oh my god look at emrex act he's actually still holding that ss and dummy on a 99.7 really flat out accuracy across the norwegians though 99.5 99.7 that early break from Jordan's really gonna hurt them and they're gonna need to see a break from australia soon to uh kind of bounce this thing back this is the kind of season double time roster that you expect out of Australia. You know, they're always very, very solid when it comes to double time. And they are showing their dominance right now. But overall, Norway is holding up as well. They only have one drop so far. Things do get yeah, it, it, look, Norway's looking amazing right now. And also, we're at the middle of the map. This is where nerves, in my opinion, start to peak. Especially because you know your score is about to be capped so heavy if you miss here. So, keeping my eyes on all the curses, but. Everyone's just dominating, and Pingridzi is going to be the second player to miss another player out of the Norway roster there, so that score lead is going to exacerbate really quickly towards the Australians. I feel like as well, when you've got a middle-seeded team against another middle-seeded team on a round of 32 pool, it's always expected to, you know, you're going to have these close maps, and it's always going to add that little bit of extra pressure on top of you. And just Australia looking to four-way this DT2 out of the gate. I can't believe it. This is... 399 FCs and a nice 97, but Norway has a 99.7 as well, just all around flat out good accuracy, but there goes Neneric as well, so it was actually just in Dulcet, he actually didn't break before. Oh wait, no he did. The first break is actually going to be one of the highest scores on their team. Wow, Australia's really just going to fall away DT2 twice in a row. Australia showing dominance on this double time pick as expected, but I mean Norway did put up a good fight as well. A lot of very very solid scores. I mean those are scores that is that score real? It's like four point seven eight, dude. That is four point seven eight million. How can it be so high? There was two ninety. There was just about three ninety nines, and Milo with a nice ninety eight. That is exactly what Australia wanted to see uh, for that bounce back. Uh, but Norway really putting up some scary scores. If you were Australia, you may be thinking that one was going to be a bit you know, freer than it was, but Norway put up a very high score as well. And that kind of looked like uh, Australia's strongest pick. 
Yeah, with 778k being the lowest score from the Norwegian side, that is a force to be reckoned with. I mean, they are putting up a very good fight. And, I mean, from the first pick, they look very comfortable in that as well. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do opt for here this time around. I wonder if perhaps they might go back into Fremont territory or maybe opt for like, Hidden One or something like that. Yeah, there are a few scores um, Australia bombed in qualifiers, so uh, Norway paid close attention to some of the maps Australia seriously underperformed in for their qualifiers. They might be able to um, steal a few points off that, but of course, without Emrek in that qualifier, it's kind of hard to gauge where Australia really stands. But uh, if you're on the side of Norway there, Someone like Yoke's Pie sitting out that DT and just seeing your team play so well on it, it's got to be a relief. You know, you've got a lot of trust in that team now and it looks like both rosters really, you know, the DT and the slow hidden stepping up today for Norway. Yeah, I'm, I'm honestly just curious as to what the next pick is going to be because there's, there's a lot of options. I mean, it's around a 32 pool. It's still, it, like, we're going to expect a lot of close scores on both sides and they're actually opting for the Nomad 4, which is the tech pick here. Bit of an wow. interesting one, but honestly not oh. that much of a surprise. This, this could cause yeah, some upsets. This, this is, one's a bit of a weird one. Look at this lineup for Norway right now. They have Yoke's PyGN, Melbourne, Marcus sitting here. I expect we're seeing Emrek not leave a single map this OWT. Um, it's kind of hard to bench Emrek on anything, on any given map. He will say, I don't want to play it. Too bad. You're Emrek. <laughs> um, but we're going to see Jordan the Bear probably step in here. Um, and maybe Vivachi or Suffix, because... Yeah, this might be another rookie debut in Vivace, yeah. I, I wonder, it could be Machine. They're definitely just discussing that last player now because they've probably got about six people who can play it and it's really, hey, who's up for it, you know? Do you want to break nerves here? Looking at the qualifier results, Vivace did play the Nomad 4 last week. A bit of an underperformance from him there. Um, so he's not going to sit in on this one. It's going to be Machine. See Machine stepping back in once again. Once again, another very, very solid player for this style of map. Uh, I think both of these rosters are looking very dangerous right now for this map. I mean, it's Norway's pick after all. They they are going to perform very well. I mean, just look at the names. Has Emrek missed yet? I think he's um, two for two. Sure. I think Emrek's on a little two for two right now. I'm going to go ahead and jinx it now, but I'm pretty sure Emrek right now is two for two. So Peng is... Uh, Doing his work, uh, making mean, up one the uh, jinx, then It's definitely going to be this one. Oh, 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 let's see. We're in for a spicy one. And this is Jen's first map of the of the match. The veteran himself. Yeah, Jen has been around for you know the longest time. He's been around oh, since OWC three, so he knows That's exactly. Map. Oh. <laughs> Jordan the Bear is going to be the first one to break. He has just subbed in and. Missed quickly. Uh, it's very early into the map, but you hate to see that on a on a you know sub and a dummy's gonna follow suit. So it's two already off for the Australians. And dude, look at Norway. They have a 99 still. Also oh, does Emrek, but it, dude, and so the machine. Okay, both the Australians holding on incredibly ac incredible accuracy, but Norway were able to combo through that intro. We do see a bit of an accuracy difference coming from Jordan the Bear, though. He is falling a little bit behind. No one missing the first slide. Is Yoke's Pie dummy missing? So it really is just those three for Norway, and we need to see a break from Machino Emrek for Norway to really be comfortable as we get into the halfway part of the map. This part is so fun to play. Yeah, I feel like it suits the song very well. Oh, Marcus with a break in that section is the opportunity that Australia needed. And GN just missing the last note. We saw someone else do that last night. I wasn't so sure who it was. But someone missed that exact part yesterday. It was really sad. That is such an unlucky time to miss right at the break. You know, you get to see the scores as well. It's just the it lead is, is going to slowly go back. It's going to go all the way back to Australia. Look at that score gap. Oh my god, it closed so quickly. And with Machine and Emrek in the driver's seat, Machine not known to have any mercy. And Melvin's just going to miss badly on the jumps there. He's going to miss and die. So is Marcus and Dummy. Jordan really picking up his slack from earlier on and Emrek and Machine have not altered at all, putting up an looking, impressive. It was looking so good for Norway at the beginning of this map, but everything just crumbled towards the end. Got the GM middle, really. And they're all just sitting on about 500k, such average 500k, but you've got Dummy getting 380, but JTB, Emrek and Machine really 
carrying the weight there. I, I mean, I got to say, Machine and Emrek, you know, if you want two people to carry you on Hidden or, or Tech, those are your two. I'm telling you right now. Emrek, I'm pretty sure, has still yet to miss tonight, which is it's just one of those days, I guess. Um, but yeah, really unfortunate scores from the uh, Norwegians there. Yoke's Pie with an unfortunate slider break early on. Yeah, a few of those streams were catching the Norwegian side off guard, especially as you can see Melva and Marcus ended up getting a few chain misses, causing some accuracy drops. We did see Jordan the Bear make a very good recovery from the beginning, despite having a little bit of a fumble there. And obviously Machine and Emmerich coming with very, very solid scores with 99 and 98.7%. Yeah, pretty funny there. You've got the two veterans in Dummy and Jordan the Bear. This is, I think this is JTB's fourth OWC in like Dummy's sixth. So it's just kind of funny to see them two kind of taking the back seat and letting the young new generation in Emrek kind of go, go off. Machine, of course, uh, playing in about four OWCs himself as well. Um, so yeah, he's a bit of a veteran there as well. And we're seeing Australia continue this DT onslaught and they're going to go ahead and pick DT3. This is the more finger controlly DT, I'd suppose. Yeah, definitely a bit more on the finger control side. We've got a lot of doubles and sort of awkward patterns. You know, you've got you've got some wiggle stuff going on. There's all sorts of things happening in this map, and this is one of my favorite maps in this entire pool. Absolutely love it. Yeah, this map was pretty cool. Uh, it's a bit scary on to to play finger control early on because really you can just have that blunder. And we're going to see Vivarchi stepping in now. So this is his OWC debut. One of those players who's kind of been snubbed from the roster like two years in a row. He's been the ninth player literally two years in a row. So very excited to see him finally make the team here um well earned for him and we'll have to see what he can do on this first map hey yeah you're gonna see a lot of specific expertise coming in from Rivace as well you know he's a very very solid hard rock player all around but then also stepping in for a lot of these double time maps especially on the finger control in particular and also overall very very solid old player yep exactly right now that they you're you're this guy can play just about everything um it's really come uh he's got the luxury of uh, his team's able to support, you know, play through what he, what he's not good at. So he's one of those players who you'll really only see play maps that he's um, really, really good at. Australia's got a, a good, well-built roster this time around. It seems like we have Ping Penguinzi and Nenerik stepping back in for Norway. And these two seem like they're going to be in for a lot of the double time picks. Yep, based and on what I've heard. Yeah, absolutely. And they've been playing, you know, out of their mind. Norway seriously has been playing out of their mind today. This is... That last map was uh, was certainly winnable for them, and the, the map before that, so for the DT, was uh, Australia did put up kind of a dominant performance on that one, but that's all right. We'll see if they can do it again here. We don't have Milo Milkshake. Instead, we have Vivarchi stepping in, and I think that's the exact same roster for uh, Norway. Yeah, getting into this map, this one pretty much doesn't let off from the beginning it just it just goes wild you know it's just going to be hitting you with doubles and all sorts of finger control patterns pretty much from the get-go no mercy whatsoever definitely a very very solid pick for the australian roster and we see a couple of early misses coming from the norwegian side yeah, this is one of those maps which really blunders, tests, yeah. tests a very very niche skill set so this could be one of those things where you have to see whether or not you know these players are more seasoned on just regular double time maps rather than finger control but yeah, it could just exactly. also be forming, forming themselves into it. Yeah, who I think about when I think of this, I think of Dummy. I think a lot of people would think of him. It's kind of got that old style finger control. So maps from before 2014, um, especially with that Zun being behind it, definitely something you're expecting someone like uh, Dummy to just shred. Yeah, you've got that song choice. And not only that, but the mapping style is also very much similar to that kind of thing. Dummy, is, Dummy has been around for a LR7. long time. So we've got Australia's first break now, and they're up about 150k. We'd have to see another one as we're approaching 50% of the map, and on the side of Norway, they're kind of all holding around the same combo here. It's actually going to be whether Dummy, Emrek, and Vivarchi can hold, but Belva's going to break and so is Fell, so that really does just leave Neneric. And with that many misses towards the end of a map, you'd have to see the rest of the Australians crumble, like now. Yeah, we're pretty much three quarters of the way into the map, and we do need to see them all. Oh, and that break from the Neric. Break. Well, that is the complete. There will be no FCs from any of anyone on Norway with Australia still holding three FCs to boot. So, what a debut for Vivashi right now! He's looking like he's going to FC his first map of OWC. Yeah, that's always a great way to end. So you know you're going to feel a lot more confident after that. Yeah, it's it's seriously, 
are such a talking point. Uh, the nerves when you come into OWC, you know, it's 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 like no other. I, c I can't stress it enough. It's seriously, you're just hoping it goes well. So getting that first map FC is a huge boost to morale. Um, your confidence is just skyrocketing. The game is so easy when you're confident. Um, but yeah, Emrex on a silent four for four right now. Um, he just has not missed yet. So, what's going yeah, on there? I, I don't. I don't think he feels like it. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe he just doesn't want to miss today. You know, we were having this discussion in. I think when we were watching him play in Yaz, and he won that solo tournament. And I think it was Dummy that said it, it was like some of these maps now in these tournaments are pushing like seven hundred PP. Like you're going to get a seven hundred PP DT one. That's not even in his top plays. Like. It's just not in his top 100 if he FCs a 700 PP map in tournament. So, seriously, that's just the level of, of player he's at right now. It's just crazy to me. He is playing a completely different game for, from us. But, I mean, at the same time, you know, he's, he's being forced to play these tournaments, which is essentially meant to be the same game as us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, you try to, you know, have an easy pool and kind of bring everyone to the same level. But for some reason, he just has not missed yet. Uh, we're going into Norway's next pick, though. They went for that uh, no mod four, and it looked alright. A few blunders there in the middle of the map, um, but are we going to see them kind of kick it back on the free mod? And we are. Yeah, I think they're going to go for the same thing that they went for last time. You know, the free mod two worked, so I think it's not a bad idea for them to opt for the free mod one and see if they can pull something out once again. This one is a very interesting map. This one seems to me like I don't know. This one seems much more on the harder side compared to free mod two, but. I think harder overall throughout the entire map. And with that said, there's a lot of string patterns which can throw you off guard on hidden, but also when it comes to the aim requirement for hard rock, that is the difficulty that comes there. And this map, it, it, it just doesn't let up, you know. I would be surprised if we see overmodding on this one, but it is very possible. Yeah, this uh, the first free the first free mod did of course go towards Norway and it was like, damn, Norway came out of the gates, you know ready to play they were all serious about it and it looked like Australia maybe having a bit of first map nerves on that first map as well because you know this is a different thing now with 3-1 up we're a bit more loose about our play styles and Norway is definitely under the pressure to perform um hopefully they can do so this is definitely a roster for it you've got GN Yokes playing Dawson and Melva I'm so sad the ARA hidden got banned though. Seriously, that that song, that map, my favorite. It would have been really, really nice to see both of these teams perform on it because I mean, there there are solid players for the ARA hidden on both sides. So, exactly you know, right. Seeing seeing two teams actually like you know go at it on such a strong map, it would have been amazing. It's such a shame that Norway's two best like you know two notoriously best players are so good at the same thing, and it's just a niche thing. So they just always get ARA banned against them. It's so sad, but it is what it is. And we're seeing some of these mods now. We're seeing Emrek opt for that hidden when he doesn't have to. We do have a hidden from machine already. So, and we also have GN and Yokopai with a comfort hidden. So definitely, it just goes to show the level of their hidden skill. Really, they're taking this as an elective, and Machine is going to be to be the first player to break. As much as I did say that it would be a surprise to see Overmod happen on these maps, there are a lot of players who do prefer Hidden in some circumstances, and I think this is definitely one of the rosters which you see it on. You know, you've got Machine preferring Hidden, Emrek also tends to prefer Hidden in most cases, and the same goes for GN and Yokespy as well. But we do see a miss coming in from GN on the Norwegian Absolutely. side, which is really, really devastating for them, because that's going to go back to Australia as Machine is still holding on despite the early miss. Yeah, they're both mod FCs, but now we've got to pay close attention to these hard rocks because when I was playing this map through, the oh, Dummy is going to break on that little stream there, so we're going to need to see a break from Norway if it's going to be matched. It just isn't as we get to the sort of mellow part of the song, and Milo putting up a good hard rock right now, and Jolson matching that. We are dead even going into the second half of this map. The next break will spell disaster. That miss from Dummy comes at such a bad time, just past the halfway mark. Yeah, he is he is score cap heavy now. I don't think he's getting anywhere above 600. As he's got a machine is going to miss. He was the first miss, and Emrek his first miss of the match on that stream just missed the start of it. Dn following suit. It's all machine versus the world. But look at Justin Melvin and Yokes fight still holding that juicy FC right now. You've got Milo Milkshake holding on as the hard rock full combo. 
Against but and Jolson is just on the Norwegian side. They are looking dude, so comfortable on this one. They're looking dominant on this one, and they just smacked Australia bad. We did see Emrex first break, but let's talk about Milo Milkshake a bit because he actually, I don't think, has he missed? Yeah, we've talked about how he's uh, making his debut here, and obviously yeah, he is. He, he hasn't been seen in tournaments much, but I mean, he he's here now in tournaments for a reason. Like I love that. Yeah, he is I love performing so much. Well. I love so much when you've got these quote unquote farmers. He's not really one of them, but you know, you've got these farmers, you know, the tawny scene, they're kind of like, you know, they're not going to be too good in tournament. They're only good in solo play. Uh, Milo, one of those people that is like, how is he going to do in tournaments? Is he going to be good? Um, and here he is absolutely killing it. So it's so refreshing to see. We saw that with Emrek last year. And we're going to see Australia with more speed onslaught going for that no mod 5 pick. I, I just still can't get over how dominant the Norwegian side looked on that free mod. Oh my god. They, they, are, yep. they are so solid for free mod. I think that's going to be something we'll probably expect banned against them in the future, future matches. They can definitely win this pick. We saw those DT2 scores. Australia had incredible scores. Could they do it again? It looked like Norway could keep up on that DT. So if they could keep up on that, they can certainly keep up on this. This felt like one of the easier maps to play. Um, it certainly is pushing that 240 BPM, but it's definitely an entry towards uh, the Nomad 5 high BPM slot. It's not the end or be all speed that you're expecting. A lot of sort of slower people can play this. Yeah, I feel like as you mentioned, this is pretty much an entry level into speed and for the most part, I wouldn't be surprised if people are more likely to miss on the aim sections. I mean, there isn't really much aim to this speed pick, but I, I, I think just random misses are bound to occur on this style of map. Yep, and if Norway take this map, well, then we've got a game. Because 3-3 three, three apiece, once you get to 4, it's, it's a whole other game here. So I'd love to see it. Dummy has been sort of blundering these last two maps. Uh, a little bit. He's had two uh, uncharacteristic misses on those maps, and we'll have to see if that follows through on the Nomad 5. You wouldn't expect it, but anything can happen. So far, he has been performing pretty well on the double times as well, though, so there is that, which is worth mentioning. And I mean, when you've got a map which is very similar to that style of map, I, I think oh. this is pretty <laughs> him to make that comeback. Uh, yeah, we're Milo. Milo. Yeah completely with that first burst, so he is going to lose that. If he wasn't an FC3, I'm not sure if he was, he is not anymore. Not to worry though, very early into the map. We've definitely talked about this map being one of the easy ones in the world, but like I said, there is always going to be room for random misses on the style. Yeah, you could the random pull. misses in, in, um, in solo play, they, uh, they don't happen so much on easy maps, but in tournaments, those random misses are so... They're just everywhere, and look how close we are. We're literally identical going into the halfway point. Dummy success. Just waiting to see if any player will break, but everyone's looking so damn comfortable on this map, and it really is going to come down to nerve control, I think. You've got pretty much almost the entire Norwegian side coming in with 99s as well though, and it's dummy with the SS on the Australian side. The veteran, he is looking comfortable, but it's actually not enough, and Penguinzi missing is going to... That score is going to jump over so quickly towards the Australians. We need to see a break from the Aussies quickly, but... With a 200k and like 2% left of map, it's just not going to happen. Australia looking to put up a dominating score on this as well. Yeah, they managed to hold on as long as they needed to. Dude, but... W S S no. The scores oh. between these two teams so too close. close. Two hundred and seventy k difference, roughly. That that was too close for a no mod five. You usually expect to see these maps uh, swing in a, a very one sided motion. Usually, one team's faster than the other, and it's it's very apparent. But these two teams, it really is just one small mistake from Norway, and that actually is costing them seven hundred k. Is costing you a map like that is. That is just unlucky. It seriously is, you know, you've done a solid performance on that, but sometimes it's just not enough when you've got three FCs on the side of Australia. Really, really good stuff there from the Aussies and Norway as well. Unlucky. Yeah, you've got Neneric coming in with that debut as well. And I mean, hitting up that 99 full combo on that map, very impressive stuff from the Norwegian mm. side. Norway are playing so well um, to kick off this OWC, but Australia also looking solid. Definitely feel like their qualifiers could have been a little bit higher uh, with how they're playing today. Incredible performances, averaging about two to three FCs every map. And now we've got Norway's pick, and dude, I reckon it's going to be no mod three, if I'm being honest. It just is. 
<laughs> just literally as you say it. Perfect timing. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you know, it's not to be surprising really. They, <laughs> if I read out these qualify scores in the No Mod Three from the Australians, you would laugh. Um, they actually got a team score of two million on the No Mod Three, which was, I mean, I haven't even looked at the qualifier stats, but I'm pretty sure that's like bottom twenty. Um, I could be heavy capping, but 200, 2 million for our Nomad 3 and Norway putting up 3.2 million on that qualifier. So, yeah, a big score difference off the Nomad uh, 3 from qualifiers. And yeah, tell us a little bit about this map. I'm actually not, I don't remember this one too much. Yeah, it's very interesting because you've got both sides, which, you know, they have very capable players for this style of map. But when it comes to this map, it features a lot of flow, flow aim, some snap patterns. There's all sorts of awkward stuff. A little bit of like slider aim as well. You need a lot of aim control for this one specifically. And I feel like this is going to be a very interesting one where we're going to see all sorts of random breaks all over the place. Um, and in general, I think both of these teams have the potential to perform really, really well in this. I mean, as much as Australia, you mentioned their qualifier result wasn't so great on the alternate pick for the qualifiers, still very, very high potential for both of these sides. We could see all sorts of, you know, full combos coming out. But as I said, this one's a bit on the harder side, I'd say. There, there's, there's a lot of room for error. Yep, it's uh, it's worth mentioning the um, the roster here for Australia. LR7 and Vivachi stepping in for this old pick. Um, we've got that solid Norway lineup that we've seen before, and I'm just wondering whether this was a single tappable map uh, or not. Because this is was this around 290, around 300. I'm actually not too sure about the BPM on this one, um, uh, or who's going to be single tapping sure. it. I guess we will find out very shortly. <laughs> But I mean, you probably expect Dummy and Emrek to do that. If yeah, I'm pretty sure. That. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if Emrek can single tap it, single tap a map, he does. Um, but yeah, we've got off the gate, both of them just ulting, so there won't be any single tap chads on this one. And Vivachi is going to have an unfortunate miss of the uh, intro there. Go to five following suit, Jordan L R seven and Marcus. So yeah, you can definitely see straight away this map is not like the rest. It's a lot harder. Yeah, as I mentioned, this map is going to be one of those maps where we're going to see all sorts of random misses occurring. This this just has a lot of really, really tricky patterns. Like, the patterns themselves are very simple in, you know, like, in play. But with that said, when it comes to tournament play, it's a little bit different, you know. Like, trying to trying to do those patterns consistently, not the easiest task. And we, uh, we see a, yet another break from Jordan LR7. But overall, scores are still pretty even. It's very, very early days. I can't stress how hard these maps are to play um, in tournament. It's so easy to just tap too far on maps. It's a lot easier to tap too fast than it is to tap too slow, uh, in my opinion at least. So maps like these where you just miss an entire pattern just by tapping too early on that first node and really getting messed up is scary. Low aim as well. It's one of the most sort of feedable styles of maps, I reckon, along with the uh, those air rate hidden. Yeah, you pretty much have to have almost all of your skills aligning at this at the exact same time. You've got flow aim, you've got slider slider aim, you've got you have to have so much aim control and finger control at the exact same time. But so far, all the players are actually managing to hold on really, really well from this part. Yeah, I'm a bit scared too. I was just about to say, GN, I don't think he's FC to map today, so to FC this one would be a challenge for a first FC. And it's only Marcus and Yoke Five versus really everyone in Australia right now. Jordan last seven and Vivace bringing their combo up. Nicely yoked by matching the two of them, but Dummy and Emrek are looking solid on this so far. Yeah, not to mention as well, Yoke's by and Marcus did actually have their early breaks as well, so Dummy and Emrek are slightly ahead, but not by much. And this is the last map, by the way. This is four point Australia. This is match point. If Australia takes this, this is G, so. The nerves on everyone. Oh, and that slider stream is going to claim GN and Melva. Wait, Melva's was capped, so was the end. Was I? Uh, looks like that was probably tournament line, but Jordan LR7. Did you see that as well? I'm like, dude, was was that just me that saw that? All right. Um, so yeah, only LR7 breaking there. So a little bit of opportunity now for Norway. There's a sliver of hope. It has to be Emrek or Dummy though. Dummy's accuracy right now, dude. Yeah, phenomenal stuff. I mean, we've got 99s on both sides. We've got Marcus and with 99. B, yeah. So we've actually bring this score up after those early misses is. Sitting on a nice 500k right now, and it's about 300k to boot. We need to see a break from the Aussies if uh, Norway needed for Norway to win this one. Marcus playing out of his mind, and Kevin Vivarti is actually going to be the one to miss. He misses a lot too, so 
300k to catch up, and there's definitely enough map. It's just whether Marcus has it in him to do it. The break, oh god. Marcus yeah. and Yoke buys a moment right now. There is a quarter of the map left. Dummy and Do Emma they have the have advantage? To, have a devastating miss from this point. Do they have the advantage? They don't. Melville with that miss is not helping. They did with Melva, but I do not know if they still have advantage. Not enough to close a 300k lead. A break for Emmerich and Dummy would have to happen right now from both of them as well. It's at last seven, Yokes and Marcus. Marcus and Yokes just drop, and that is going to be yep. GG. That is going to be GG for the Norwegians here. Australia putting up incredible scores on the board, and look at that Emrek Dummy. In no other fashion should you know your two carries really just pop off to close. Just yeah, build this different. Is, this is brutal what they are doing on this map right now. But I mean, you've seen Norway pop off throughout this entire match and it is going to be very exciting to see where they go in the future i know right dude norway looking like like a very good uh sort of making it to those quarter semi slots you know i'm so surprised with how well they performed australia had an amazing performance though seriously they just put up some of the highest uh, scores we've seen so far and um it was a really good really good debut for a lot of their rookies there but yeah Dude, Norway played out of their minds today. That was an incredible match. Yep, overall very solid performance from both teams. We saw a lot of close maps and we saw a lot of dominance on each of the maps that we, we saw picked from some of these teams. I mean, Norway coming out with very, very strong free mod scores and Australia looking very dominant on speed and double time in particular. Yeah, that was yeah, Norway on those free mods, man. They're going to have, I tell you what, in that next loser's bracket match next week is going to be exciting because whoever they are up against is in for a world of trouble not just on those low ars as well we saw them putting up incredible scores on the speed maps as well like they only lost their lowest score was 700k on speed like that's just that's just seriously you shouldn't be losing maps with 700k as your as your you know lowest score um but yeah that's going to be gg to the australians an incredible first match for them pulling up the 5-3 victory uh, i believe the next matchup will be uh romania and taiwan and that is a match i'm excited for